I know that I would want to go someplace that mattered to me. Exactly, yeah. Like, you know, the only thing I could think, well, like with a graveyard or something, like if they, if you wanted to come back and visit, like where your body was, or if you, or if you wanted to come back and visit, you know, because your family comes there to visit you. But I don't really see the morgue having that same type of uh, experience for, for for that. But I, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, I always do enjoy seeing the morgues, and you know, if, like at Waverly Hills, I went and got in the body tray or whatever, and uh, Edwin Shaw did that too, and you know, so I think you know, seeing it was cool, but I I, I find I do get better better things in other spots of the hospitals. I think so too. But we have a question over in our Spreaker chat from Gwendolyn who said, what are some of the ghosts said to reside in the hospital in Ohio, the old Reed Hospital? Hey, Gwen. Uh, so from what I've heard about old Reed, uh, it's kind of been became like a local hotspot for like people to go drink and things like that. Uh, I couldn't find too much on the haunting said to reside there, but I just find, you just find people like saying, Oh, even the cops are afraid to go in that place and things like that. Um, you know, what I experienced there, what wasn't too much, like I said, the basement area, I got that kind of sense of dread. I heard some things like sounded like something banging on metal or something like that. But, uh, other than that, like I haven't, really found too much about that other than it's just a spooky place for that people like to go and and uh and drink and everything now at the edwin shaw hospital which is now demolished uh at that place there was like an old tuberculosis hospital and you know we had some really cool stuff happen in there with like rocks a rock getting thrown at us and things like that um but but yeah. Well, that's interesting. I've I've only seen a actually seen a rock thrown once, and that was at an old bed and breakfast. It's really something when you see that. Yeah. Anytime, I guess it would be considered what poltergeist activity. Yes. Uh, generally, t- from what I've experienced in in my investigations, it's pretty pretty rare, you know, <laughs> to see or to experience. Uh, but when it does happen, it's It'll definitely blow you blow you away. Yeah. Well, it uh, did the young man it was thrown at. I'll tell you that. Yeah. So, nothing like dodging ever, your ghosts. Yeah. Did I ever tell you, or did you ever see the video where I went to uh, Old Bryce and had something either thrown twice, uh, and I could never find out if there was a person there or not. But, uh, I like, was that Old Bryce or, you know, Jemison Center is this, is, I believe, like, what people should call it, because the actual Bryce Hospital is technically was Bryce Hospital before what yes. they call old Bryce. <laughs> but uh, there's this, the room with the smokestacks. Uh, some people say that people were cremated in there. I don't think that's true. Uh, you know, I think it was just, like, a furnace area. Um, but I was in that room, and, you know, I've, I, I'm by myself, and I say uh if you can throw this rock back at me you know please do so and i throw the rock and i'm just standing there and you kind of hear like you hear like something like kind of shift or something and then you just hear this loud slam on like sounds like came up from the roof wow and so i like jump and like you said i usually don't get shaken up or anything but this made me jump you can see it on the video i like jump and i'm like yo yo because i thought someone was out there messing with me and then it happens again, the same exact loud slam. And I like go outside, and I searched around. And I stayed there for about 30 minutes. I went back in, nothing happened. I came out. I couldn't find any sign that people were there. But it had to be people because, I mean, it happened twice. Like, I, I don't know. It was definitely one of, a, <laughs> one of those moments that just made me jump. <laughs> well, it would just about have to. I mean, seriously. I yeah, don't know. Was... I don't know what I would have reacted as if that had been something coming at me. 
totally unexpected. I remember uh, someone commented on it, and they were like, they were like, why did that scare you so much? Or whatever. And then they, they re-commented later, and they were like, okay, I thought about it, and if I was alone in a place like that, like, I would have jumped too. I'm like, trust me, like, <laughs> it was totally unexpected, <laughs> like, uh, real-life jump scare. Well, we've got Frank Lee in the, in the WBHM chat saying, that's paranormal overload. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yes, Frank, yes, it was. <laughs> Ooh, that's another thing that's coming up is the uh, little conference in February, February 9th. I think Frank's going to be there and Kim. and They both are, uh, yes. That's going to be a lot of fun. You know, yeah. I found it odd because I've been doing this in Alabama for a long time. And Frank had to. And yeah, all of us have. And I was completely not familiar with that person. So I think that that's going to be interesting to see because yeah, there's not a lot of, yet you know, there's so many of us and I, of course, am not able to get there because, you know, yikes, but the, the other, the fact that somebody's putting something together like this is pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. I had never heard of him either. Uh, you know, when I saw what was going on, and I saw that, like, Kim was going to be there and, and Frank and everyone, I was like, well, I know all these people, but I had never met, uh, I guess his name's Dr. Graham, uh, that, that's running it. So I still haven't met him. Um, you know, I've watched some of his videos and whatnot, but it'll definitely be interesting to see how it, how it goes for, you know, f- first year event and everything. Uh Sorry if you can hear your dog howling. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you said that because normally it's my dogs. <laughs> and I, I am not kidding. So Yeah, I apologize if you People are used to my dogs. We I've had a running joke for four and a half years with Kylie the Wonder Lab, so <laughs> when she barks yeah, the dogs... first person to comment gets her for a month. <laughs> My dogs are, that's my neighbor's dogs. My dogs probably joined in too, but they, uh, they love to get in on any podcast or video that I'm doing. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just wanting to be part of the pack, right? Yeah. The wolf pack. Exactly. Yeah. So, we actually, uh, do a little howl every once in a while on the live streams and what. <laughs> well, you know, when you're sitting out there in the woods, there's no better time. Oh, Exactly. Or, yeah, you know, as far as timing and having a good time, mm-hmm. just being one with the woods out there. Yeah, I, that's uh, one of my favorite places to be, honestly. And uh, it's a place I feel very comfortable is out in the woods, uh, even at night, which a lot of people don't. <laughs> but, uh, at night makes me a little nervous, but that's only because I had a possum sneak up behind me once and (laughs) they are not friendly. I don't care what anybody thinks. They do not make good pets and they are not nice. So I ran into one. I ran into one the other day and, uh, he didn't look too happy to see me, but he kind of just was sitting up in the tree and he just kind of turned his head away from me, like expecting me to just not see him. (laughs) And I was like, we're cool, man. We're cool. But uh, but yeah, my history with the woods is is some some cool stuff has happened. Uh, you know, I got started going out in the woods a lot, of course, growing up and everything. But once I, right when I graduated high school, I actually went out and attempted the Appalachian Trail. Um, since I had just graduated, it was a little late in the season, so by the time I got about halfway, it was already winter, and I had walmart gear so i had to come home oh but, wow. uh, and, definitely yeah i wouldn't have, i wouldn't have made it uh but in 2014 i actually got to complete a full through hike of the appalachian trail so where some cryptid researchers you know have a big background in like hunting and tracking mine was a little bit different which it was more of like long distance backpacking uh i'm not a hunter myself uh, and I don't consider myself a hunter or a tracker by any means. Uh, I have learned from 
you know, some great people like, like Jonathan Odom and uh, Ken, uh, Ken Patterson. Uh, they have taught me a lot about, about tracking and, and, and things like that. But my background in uh, being out in the woods was a little bit different. It was a long distance by backpacking and, and uh, you know, being able to go out and just live with a backpack and go as far as I can. And um, so through that, I started to, uh, on the Appalachian Trail, I would actually read stories about different cryptids all along the East Coast. Uh, one of my favorites was the, the man-eating rock up in Glastonbury Mountain in Vermont and uh, things like that. So, you know, I, I had never really heard too much about Bigfoot being in Alabama. Uh, and then I and then I started looking into it more and then I started finding it more and more. And, you know, you can look online and you won't find many sightings in Alabama. You'll find a, a decent amount. But the amount of sightings that aren't reported and aren't online is pretty insane. Like, there's a lot of people that, that see, you know, Bigfoot-type creatures. They see what they call the Alabama white thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, of course, there's stories about, like, the wampus cats and big cats in general that are s- supposed to not be in Alabama. I've seen one of those myself up in Walker County. Uh, you have, like, the Walker County creature... There's a few little UFO, uh, like there's like one famous UFO story, but there are a lot of UFO sightings in Alabama. I know that's not cryptid related, but even I've had experiences of that. Well, exactly. Like we don't know what's interrelated through this stuff because you cannot get full information unless you're actually standing there when one is there. And there's all this talk about Bigfoot being interdimensional and then related to extraterrestrials. And exactly. There's a lot of questions relevant to that. And that's one thing about me as a cryptid researcher. You know, I, I'm very open-minded. Like, I, I like to take a look at all the different angles. Some people are strictly flesh and blood. Some people are strictly what they call like the woo side or like the paranormal side. But I like to take it all in. And I mean, who's to say that they aren't both, you know, flesh and blood and supernatural or or what we consider supernatural? Um, Because like you said, there's there's stories where UFO sightings are are intertwined with Bigfoot sightings. And uh, in one of John Keel's books, he actually has a story where someone actually saw a Bigfoot type creature getting on a UFO. So you have things like that. Uh, one of the experiences I'll tell you about that I had in Talladega National oh, Forest. Well, I'm going to stop you because this sounds like it's going to be good and we're at a break. And I don't want to miss a second and I don't want you to have to stop in the middle of it either. So Sounds good. this is only two minutes and y'all come on back and we're going to get this story because I know it's going to be awesome. 